विद मी निशा ग्राइफा न्यूज कवर द प्रोग्राम अबाउट पी आर इन द एज ऑफ इंस्टेंट मीडिया कंडक्टेड बाय पब्लिक रिलेशन काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया बैंगलोर चैप्टर एंड यंग कम्युनिकेटर्स क्लब इन एसोसिएशन विद यूनिवर्सिटी विश्वेश्वरिया कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मिस्टर जो ए सकेरिया गेव अ ब्रॉड व्यू ऑन इंस्टेंट मीडिया एंड हाउ पीपल आर मिस गाइडेड विदाउट अ पी आर लेट इज टेक अ लुक What is significant about Vedic Rose Corporation Uttar Pradesh? What is significant is it is what if you just know the number you forget it in ten minutes. But if you link it to something, then you never forget it. Because if you have the head and the heart connected, then you won't forget. That's the challenge of any PR professional. Because just giving data, people will forget. But you connect it without amul, not because of the content of the butter. How it is made, but the heart is connected to the girl, and the head is connected to quality part. So when both are connected, then we like it even more, and we won't forget it. Let me connect that 20 crore only for short time. I have not, you know, connect all those numbers. Uh, 20 crore is actually one sixth of India. We are about 124 crores India. So one sixth of India resides in Uttar Pradesh. You win Uttar Pradesh, you won India. The last election, BJP won. Uttar Pradesh got 80 Lok Sabha seats out of 543. Win the 80, then you carry India with you. Last time BJP had 72 out of 80. It's like you know answering a, a big uh, you know exam of 543 questions. You won 72 in, from that 80 mark question, then you got it. Which is why most of India's prime ministers come from UP. So whether it is an Indira Gandhi or Or a Nehru, or a, or a Lal Bahadur Shastri, or a Rajiv Gandhi, or uh, Narendra Modi, who is also from Varanasi, uh, you know, in Uttar Pradesh. But if you still cannot carry it into your heart, the 20 and 120, uh, and 120, let me give you another perspective. The largest populated countries in the world are one, China. How many? Guess is three. Eighty, sixty, ninety. These are all good guesses because once you know first rank has got one hundred thirty, second rank has got one twenty, then third rank must be around ninety, eighty, seventy, sixty, hundred. Completely wrong. The USA is a mere thirty-two crores. From which you know that there are only two countries in the world: China, India. The rest are third rank is nowhere in the picture. Right? Third rank is nowhere in the picture. All the other 260 countries put together is uh, you know 32 and then less, you know six and seven and three and one and five and all that. In other words, what is the United States after all? It is one and a half with the British. 20 plus 50 percent more is one and a half. 30, 32 crores. So then, why is the United States ruling the whole world with an iron hand? Why is it? What? Why do you think? This country with a mere 32 crore people, which is a one and a half crore Pradesh, rules the whole world for a hundred years plus. What is the difference? The difference is HR, human resource of those 32 crore people, is far, far higher than 120 of India put together, 130 of China put together, and you know all the other nations put together. Britain ruled the world for a hundred years in the 19th century. The United States ruled the world for a hundred years in the 20th century. Towards the end of the 20th century, we were told a story that the 21st century belongs to China and India. It is now 16 years into that century, and we now understand that was a story. It is not a fact. Because 16 years have passed by, the U.S. continues to rule. Last year, Obama was here, and he was standing in the Rendu Modi in a picture. Would anybody? Anywhere in the world, see the picture. 
wonder who is the boss. It's like an HOD and a student standing with there in the picture and asking, you know, can you make out who is the boss? It's easy, you know. The US rules the world because of HR. Last January, we are to March, so uh, about two months back, there was this printout fan of a day. A Maharashtrian boy, Mumbai city, scoring 1,900. You've heard this? You have to have heard it because all Indians know cricket. When you saw this number, did you feel anything? I thought this, you know, something is terribly, terribly wrong with this. Well, this was the point. That, my dear friends, was the moment. Just as I guessed, something was terribly wrong with the story. The story was carried around the world. Ayush Dube, extreme left. He is 10 years old, class 5 student, 4 feet 4 inches. Sat Sanuke is half an inch taller, 4, 4 and a half. Ayush's classmate, again, that's that. And the, all the others, even the third guy, Mayank, would you say he plays cricket? I would think uh, he may not even play games. <laughs> the bowlers are all from class 5, 6 and 8. And who was the batsman? 10 standard ball. Playing under 16. But these guys, all under 12, you see their ages. They are playing not just under 12, they are playing a team that is not even under 14. They are playing a team under 60. They are seniors as senior. This is like you know a 10 standard, you know, big brother and 10 standard uh, younger brother playing uh, you know, in your home yard. You know, that guy will score 2,000 runs and will not get out. They have never held a full-size leather ball in their hands. They only played the tennis ball. And here they are bowling on a 22 yard pitch, where when they bowl, the ball will not reach them. So the batsman might have been standing in the middle of the pitch. And all that helped Dhanavati to get 1,009 runs of just 323 balls. Now, any journalist worth her salt or his salt or anybody sitting in the hall, if you have common sense, you look at the figure and you must say something is terribly wrong. You multiply, it's easy to multiply 3 into 3, that would be 969, right? Every ball was minimum 3. How can you have a game like that? You bowl 323 balls, everything was 3 or more. Meaning, most of the you must have missed a few balls. Most of them were four or sixes, and the others were two or three. This is something terribly wrong. And then the story shifts because the media has reported this, and not just any media, all Indian media, from the Times of India to the Hindustan Times to Deep South, Malayalam Manorama, all the news agencies, the PTIs and the UNIs, and the Reuters, and the APs and the AFPs, and the BBC. The BBC comes from the country which invented cricket. I was visiting in, in Bush House, London, heading BBC. I would simply pick up the phone and sack the BBC correspondent in Bombay. Because when you see in the morning paper that somebody is batting on 723, you should be there because history is in the making. And nobody has gone there. It is so clear nobody has gone there. Because none of this was important. Right? Somebody has filed something and everybody has copied. This happens in journalism day in and day out. Which is why we can't trust any media. I am ashamed that a paper as big as Gulf News in Dubai plays up the story, saying, you know, you must hand it over to India. You know, they do incredible things. The headline was, <coughs> now an Indian company launches a phone that is cheaper than a Starbucks coffee. A Starbucks coffee in Dubai costs more than 250 bucks. Indians are amazing, right? So, idiotic journalists are not only in India, they are everywhere. They proliferate. You heard about uh, an Indian soldier being buried alive in snow, six of them, uh, nine of them, and uh, you know, only one of them was rescued after six days. And his name was Anuman Tapa from here from Bangalore city, so something that touches you. And we all saw the video of him being rescued, right? On Dudashan, on Times Now, on all channels, in the newspapers, 
and the video was seen and seen a million times. And one wondered, how could that guy, who in the video if you see, you know, he's shaking off the, the snow and he's coming out of the hole. And uh, I, when I saw the video, I was wondering why the others are not helping him. You know, because the, the soldiers standing around, they're not even digging the rest. You know, once that little hole is there, he's himself coming out, wriggling out and coming out. And moving snow. And then, you know, just a day later he dies. How could this guy, who was so healthy, he could come out of it himself, die that A A M S must be you know, such a poor hospital that you know, a man in such good health was killed the next day in the A S. Uh, you know, many readers would have thought he should not have been taken to the hospital, he should have been you know, just taken to his camp, in the army camp. But that video was wrong. That video, played by every channel in India, and pictures, the same picture given in India, was of a soldier who was buried for a few minutes in a snowfall, 2014. No channel expressed regret, saying, you know, we were taken for a ride by somebody. Somebody put it online on social media saying, this is the video of that guy, Hanumanta Babi, rescued. All television channels believed it. And all Indians believed it. Here comes a guy, the truth, thankfully somebody has gone and investigated. The Hindu sent its correspondence to the doctors. So they have had a full page story on the story with the doctors. And the doctors say that uh, in this condition, when you are under snow for six days, he survived only because they were taught to make a cavity around them as soon as some accident like this happens. So he was in that cavity, which would give him some, uh, some succor and some warmth also, because the air is there. But even while you are there, something else can happen. In medical terms, they say, when you are drinking alcohol, you feel you are sweating and it's very hot. But actually, your body is doing cold. In this situation, you will think you're very hot and you're very warm, but you're actually you're very cold. So by the time he was rescued, Anandam Puntapa had actually stripped himself down to his underwear. He had no clothes on him. Because the body tells you, you're very warm, it's too hot. He was taken out in his underwear. The video that we saw was not, you know, he was in full dress. Thankfully, one paper was done. But this is not the way to go about instant communication, instant media. I would not uh, particularly congratulate Hindu for doing this or this. Or this story was done by Indian Express, which sent a team of, in quotes, investigative journalists to Thana 10 days after match because somebody in Indian Express also suspected something was wrong. So they went and did it. But what a shame. You should have known it that way, and that was part of your daily routine to go and cover a match in which somebody is batting on 720 not out. You've not done that. Then you go 10 days later and then come out of the scoop and say, Hey, do you know it is all false? It should be part of your regular job. This should have been part of Hindu's regular job. But Hindu and Indian actors stand out in these individual cases because they have done which. The others had to run even 10 days later. But I have just brought these to your notice to tell you that this is what is happening in the age of instant media. When this happens, instead of just, an, uh, just engaging a counsellor like the Arya Gurukul School did, Arya Gurukul School actually has suffered such defamation across the world, saying this team has been battered at 1,382 runs and minutes. They should hire a PR agency. Anuman Tappa's case, no PR. Army has not said that that is a false belief. This kind of programs every month. You can uh, contact uh, Divya and uh, Sumati and Mansi. We'll be having kindly tell all others who have missed this, all other colleges. To be interesting always. Please note this and come back to us again. Uh, brought up by CRC National Council and one is Kautilya by the YCC students. I request all of you to contribute kindly. For that magazine, uh, uh, Mansi is the editor and uh, she is the managing editor. Kindly send your uh, articles. You know, that way you can uh, uh, improve your writing techniques. You know, okay? Please, it will be circulated all over again. That, uh, these two magazines. 
have Lata, Madam Middle C is the president elect of the NCA Bank in Chat Box. Yes, sir. He was always available on Twitter and Facebook as well. So you could just uh, tweet to him uh, about questions and he's more than happy to answer. You'll see that his Twitter profile and uh, he also has a blog spot which he is updated every day. So you could just follow that and you can talk here more of him. Alright, that brings us to the uh, end of this session. For uh, January, the formal uh, uh, note of thank you, I invite uh, Vivya. Vivya is the director, she's the head of YCC. All your queries related to YCC, uh, because she's the right person to answer all the queries uh, for your memberships and, and just about anything that you have with YCC. Vivya is the person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This guest lecture is arranged especially for the students and uh, faculty members. I'm sure we all had a uh, fruitful information about the topic we are in the age of instant media. Here I am to thank our uh, guest. I take this opportunity on behalf of PRCI, YCC, University of Vishwishwaraya College of Engineering to thank our guest of the day, Mr. Joy A. So I uh, call upon uh, Mr. N.B. Jaira to felicitate our guest of the day. Uh, my talk here was mostly about getting the facts wrong. Uh, in JNU, uh, the whole nation was trying to sift uh, truth and lies. In fact, that exercise is still going on. What is good about that whole uh, episode is that India has woken up to the fact that everything must be scrutinized. And, uh, uh, you know, there was one side opposing any kind of scrutiny and saying, you know, this is it while uh, on the other side we had uh, the voices for plurality standing up so that's great for media for anybody in communication uh, because we must have all sorts of voices what do you think like uh, this jnu case what is going on it is okay like something well uh, you know there's one uh, school of thought that educational institutions would be for education 
but it would be wrong to think that education simply means sitting in class and studying the syllabus. It's far more than that. And it's good to see that uh, India's youth are uh, you know, putting up and uh, throwing up questions for the whole country to, to think about and ponder over. So in that case, uh, JNU has actually made us all wake up. That was a splendid speech given by Mr. Joe A. Sakaria, who is a journalist and a trainer. Stay tuned to graphinews.com for more updates. With me, Nisha, cameraman Sujesh.